G'day everyone, welcome back to part two. Uh, we're going to talk today about the, um, the tools that I recommend for your electrical system. And it's going to be a little bit shorter than the previous video, which I talked about the tools that I uh, used and recommend to use for building your own little tiny home and wheels. Today we're just going to quickly go through the essential tools that I recommend for doing your electrical system, which includes uh, your solar, your battery, switches, fuses, cables, all that sort of thing. Um, what I have here on the table, I could build another van using it. So I'll go through and explain why it's important and why I think that uh, if you're looking at uh, undertaking this task yourself and you're kind of starting out, you don't have a lot of experience, um, these are the sorts of things that I would recommend going down to your local hardware store and grabbing a pair for yourself. So to start off, this little gadget here, it's a, actually a new one, a replaced one that broke. So this is a little uh, portable multimeter, just a, a basic one. You don't need anything super expensive or high powered. The multimeter is really just to check the voltage. Um, check voltage and you can do a continuity test as well. So you can actually check if there's, if there's a fault or a break inside a wire somewhere. Um, the main thing I use the multimeter for is checking the voltage from solar panels and from the battery. So you've got the positive, you've got the negative, plug those on the respective sides, turn it on, put it on the correct mode, and off you go, it will tell you uh, what's happening. So this can be really useful for troubleshooting. So if you're having problems with a solar panel or your battery and you know, you're not sure where the, you know, the issues are, you can use this just to double check any of the other devices that you might have in the van that also show the voltage. So a little portable uh, multimeter, really, really handy device to have. Definitely you need this. You need this at all times with you and you need this definitely during the build. So the second thing, not as important as the multimeter, is just like a little, um, little compact soldering iron. So most of the uh, connections in the van are not soldered. Most of them are crimped and sh uh, heat shrinked but there are occasional times when a soldering iron is an important tool to have. Certain things need to be soldered to join together or maybe the little crimp um, connection tool isn't quite doing a job or it's not quite secure enough. Um, in those times, a soldering iron can be really good just to help bolster something up. Um, you can also use a soldering iron as a little uh, heat you know, engraving tool as well. So that's a secondary thing if you wanna get yourself arty and spruce something up inside the van. So yeah, a little soldering iron. I really recommend the ones which have a fuse built into them and also like this one here is actually uh, temperature adjustable. So you can actually set it to different temperatures depending on what sort of job you're doing. So really handy little tool, doesn't draw a lot of power, it can run it through the inverter and I have it with me at all times. So this is a non-insulated uh, crimping plier. So you use this on uh, like a, a lug which doesn't have the sheath or anything on it. This is a bit too big for this fella. Uh, but yeah, generally a pretty handy tool to have. I find with something like this, I still it's really handy because I still get quite a lot of uh, purchase on it. So just because it's got the longer arms, you can really crimp down. Sometimes I even use this on the insulated terminals and then just put a bit of heat shrink around it anyway to protect it. So something like this, really handy to have. Uh, the next is the opposite of that one there. So this is a crimping tool for insulated. Um, so you, if you, hopefully this works with the camera, the little teeth just here are rounded rather than being sharp, like on this one here. So this is designed for your little uh, lugs and connections like this where they've actually got the little um, insulation around it. So this is designed to not damage the insulation, but still uh, crush the inside and secure it onto your wire. So something like this is really handy. Um, the next thing is a little uh, wire cutter, measurer and stripper. So this is like a little multi-tool, uh, has you know 10 different uses. Doesn't really do all those uses very well, but for what it's designed for, which is to strip uh, fine uh, gauge cable, it works really well. So this is just a cheap basic tool, no spring, nothing on it. It costs probably less than $10, but it's durable, it works, it's comfortable, it's easy to use. So that's really all you need, something like that. The next thing is a cable cutter. So this is specifically designed to cut different types of cable, um, primarily 
small to medium gauge cable. You can open it up and cut through thicker cable, but it's, it's not as neat of a cut. Now, why you would use this instead of scissors or instead of side cutters is it's just designed, the shape of it and the profile is designed to cut through a cable really nice and neat. Um, you get a nice, good, clean cut from it. So, you know, they're not, they're not expensive. They're small, compact, simple, easy to use. It's definitely worth having on hand. Now, this big fella, this is a hydraulic uh, crimp press. So, or a hydraulic crimping tool, according to the label. So this is really useful for big, heavy duty cable and big lugs. So the sort of connections that you're gonna to attach to an inverter or to your battery, those sorts of things there, um, you're gonna to need to use something like this. This is the best way of doing it. So it comes with a set of little different dies. So depending on the size of the lug, you have a corresponding little um, piece here to go about it and actually crimp it on and secure it properly. You can attach these lugs to thick cable using like a hammer, banging it in place or otherwise. It's not the best way of doing it. You're never going to get a really secure, good um, connection. Using a hydraulic crimping tool is the best way of doing it. So they're not particularly expensive. They're a little bit heavy, um, but they're not expensive and they work really well. And I bought this right at the end of the van build and I sort of found, I wish I'd bought one at the start because I was actually going to a local auto electrician and asking them to crimp on cables for a battery connection or to the um, alternator charger. And in the end, it was easier just to buy one of these myself and do it myself. And that way I could work all through the night and connect things and cut things and change it and do it again and use that. So I recommend it. And lastly, in terms of pliers, um, a good set, just like when you're doing a van builder, a good set of pliers is really important. So having a set of side cutters as a backup pair um, to the wire cutters. Side cutters are really helpful as a backup. A pair of nose pliers and then a pair of square nose pliers as well. So they just allow you to, you know, twist wires or pull things through or get to things. Really, really helpful and handy to have. The next thing is a box cutter with a fresh sharp blade. I use this a lot for quickly cutting uh, thin cable when I don't have the other tool on hand, for quickly uh, stripping the insulation off to make a connection on, on cables when I don't have the stripping tool on hand. It's a really, really handy tool. Every van builder should have a couple of these box cutters and a packet of fresh clean sharp blades on hand because you use this sort of tool all the time. And I basically have this in my pocket or on my tool belt always when I'm doing a build. So box cutter, really important. Now, it's not so much tools, but since this is a shorter video, I figured it'd be worth going into it because I'm making this video in mind for someone who's a bit of a newbie, someone who's starting out thinking about doing their first build or they're thinking about doing their first big build. Um, so the other things that I would recommend having on hand Stuff like this, this is like your uh, spiral tubing or spiral wrap. So this sort of unwinds. This is really, really helpful for wrapping around cable uh, after you've run your cable through the van. It keeps it protected from sharp edges. It keeps the cable neat and bunched together. It works really well. It's not expensive. So buy yourself a big packet of this stuff. You can get in black and you can get in clear. Buy yourself a big pack, have it on hand. You won't regret it. The next thing in the same vein is this stuff here. So this is your uh, corrugated uh, split tubing. It comes in different diameters. So this is quite a large size, medium, and you can get smaller and you can also get larger as well. This stuff here, the corrugated split tubing works really, really well. Um, for the same reason as the spiral tubing, you can basically split it open, run your cables on the inside of it, and then that will help it, uh, keep it protected from any edges. So if you're running a cable like over an edge, um, you need to think over the years, that cable, the insulation on the cable that might be running over something, that's gonna run and uh, eventually will rub and cut through. So if you put this over the cable to protect it, especially when you're going over any edges, that will help stop it from getting damaged and hopefully will stop you from having any errors or you know things going wrong or shorting out or whatever. So buy yourself a big packet of this in a few different sizes, have it on hand. So you buy them in rolls in like a packet, buy it, 
um, you won't regret it. It's really helpful and you, you should use this all the time. Your cable should rarely ever be just being run exposed. It should always be, be run through something like this to protect it from any edges. The next thing, um, electrical tape, use this in conjunction with the split tubing. It's just really handy just to quickly wrap around something, keep things together, keep it protected. Um, I have a few different colours and rolls of electrical tape with me in the van during the build and at all times. Um, you've got uh, your lugs, so this is just a little hand selection of lugs that I have now with me just to do different jobs. Um, got a few spares, different sizes, different connections. You can get your lugs which are designed to go onto little terminals and you've got ones which are designed to you know piggyback a cable and turn one cable into two um, all sorts there's all different shapes rather than going too much into it i would just recommend to go down to your electrical uh, store and buy yourself a big multi-pack of lugs and they come in all different shapes sizes connections types and then you need these big fellas here these won't come in the multi-pack. These are for like uh, connecting to battery cable. You need to get a packet of these as well, uh, different sizes and different sort of hole sizes and different cable sizes underneath. Um, have them on hand. Don't buy, don't do what I did at the start. I only bought like a little 50 mix pack in a, in a satchel bag. It's useless because you need more than you think you will. It's better to go buy like a like a, a thousand pack in like a, a little divided neat box and that way you have them on hand you have what you need along the same vein um, heat shrink so heat shrink is really really important to especially after you've connected the cable to one of the lugs and if you've got any bits that are exposed you can run the heat shrink over the top over the little collar and then you get you either a little Bic lighter on it or you get your heat gun and that will shrink it down and secure it and just kind of make it all secure and safe and stop the cable from being pulled away from the lug and kind of keep it all together and clean. So same deal with the uh, with the lugs. Uh, you can buy a heat shrink in like uh, little cylinder tubes and that's the best way to do it. Buy a big tube or a big packet of it and it will come in all different shapes, colors, sizes, widths to suit different types of cable because it only shrinks so much so you need to use different sizes for different cable and you will use a lot of it and it's really helpful really handy it's just a way of protecting the cable keeping it secure keeping it snug you don't want any cables pulling you don't want any cables rubbing you don't want anything shorting or catching so get yourself a big packet of heat shrink and uh, use it as much as you can and keep a little lighter handy in your pocket when you're doing the heat shrink um, or a heat gun is the best way of doing it so that's it for the electrical stuff. Um, I hope it made sense. I will try to put a link to the different tools um, in the description of the video. So I am making this video from the idea that it's for beginners and newbies. So I know that you know a lot of what I've just said is kind of like sounds like you know an alien language and you, you don't know what half the tools are. I hope that by showing you them and explaining and kind of how they, they are used, it will help you a little bit more. Um, and yeah, I'll put the links of all the different tools in the description so you can click and you can read up and see the photo and you can reconfirm. So you, these, are, these tools as well, I'll note, are the minimum. So if you're doing a really complex setup, you're going to need more tools to specialize in different things. But for a basic setup, um, what, what I have here will do the job and it will get you through and get you sorted. So that's all for now. I'm going to pack all this stuff away and then I'm going to bring you part three, which is all the tools that... I recommend to keep with you in your van at all times. So thanks for watching. I hope this was um, helpful for you. I hope it wasn't too noisy in the background. I've got my little lapel mark on today. So hopefully that will filter out a lot of the background noise. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye. Tool is, whoop, <laughs> this tool here, this is for non-insulated, which means that they don't have the little, whoop, yeah. pause that for a second.